coming. Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. What's on the agenda for today? We are in the 7600 with the feed mill on the back. We are headed out to my place. We've got half a load of corn on the feed mill because we are going out to partially fill up the uh, creep feeder out in the steer lot out of my place. So Travis has a load of buckets. Uh, we just got done filling everything up. The silo is getting pretty empty. It's getting to the point where we gotta climb in and buck, or scoop it out, but uh, the sweep inside is busted, so we gotta get that fixed sometime. Um, we're gonna head out there right now. So now we're standing out in the oats field that is by the buildings at my place, and just walking around, looking through it, looking at the alfalfa underneath. So here's the oats, here's the alfalfa, and it's just serving as, the oats is serving as a parent crop to the alfalfa here. And uh, once we cut the oats off, then the alfalfa will take over. And typically we'll cut the new seeding uh, later in the fall. Big butt ain't fitting through there. Yeah. Hey, Calvin. We just got done filling the creep feeder in the steer lot, so we're gonna head up here and dump buckets in for the caps and the pole shed. Uh, we're thinking that we're going to sell all of our calves here very shortly because we're just out, about out of corn in the corn silo, which is a good thing because it's the first time it's been cleaned out in like two or three years. And when you don't clean it out every year, you get really bad corn in the bottom of it. So we're cleaning out all the corn that's in it now and uh, we're trying to use up as much as we can. going to disconnect the feed mill and we're gonna put the tether on the back of the 7600 because Travis got a little adventurous and he cut some hay and unfortunately like two days later the forecast changed and it got poured on for like two days so it's had ample time to dry up now so we got to go out there and tent it up to release some of the, more of that moisture that's underneath uh, it's pretty well matted down to the ground so by tending it we're gonna be able to pick it up off the ground and let it air out a little bit more before the rain starts again, which they're calling for this weekend. So it gives us like three days to get the hay made. Uh, we're gonna tend it today and then probably bale it either tomorrow or the next day. So yeah, um, what else has been going on around here? That's pretty much it. Uh, it's We've been getting rain like constantly and I know that everybody else has too. So we've been doing a lot of work. I cleaned up the VT, I greased it. We changed some grease zerks on that, backed that in the shed until we pulled the combine out because the combine needs to have some work done to it. So now we've got the Rhino Ag P419H on the back of the 7600. And we are going to head out to the top of the hill up here at the main farm. We're gonna tet that. And then we're gonna head out to my place and start tetting out there. It's raining? Mother Nature, I tell you. She saw that I was pulling out of the shed with the tractor and she threw a curveball at us. <laughs> well, I'm gonna go out there and tent anyway because we do have a few dark clouds, but I think we should be good for now. At least the forecast is saying it's gonna be okay. So it is still pretty wet out here, as you can see from the tracks that I'm making on the field road. But corn's coming up good. And uh, 
soybeans in the low spots are trying to pull through. Hopefully we don't see too big a hurt in yield. But they look pretty good here too. We're out here on top of the hill. This is the highest point on this farm. Now uh, the ground is starting to dry up as you can see there, but there's still a little bit of moisture on the ground. Come over to the hay. It's been really uh, washed off. You could say that uh, the rain washed off all the bugs, but it is fairly wet underneath. So we're gonna wanna spread this out over the field to help dry it out some. And provided that the sun comes back out over the next two days, we should be able to get this made. So it definitely needs to be tetted. So here's the Rhino Ag PT419H. We've had this for three years now, and uh, she's been, she's become a crucial asset on the farm when it comes to making hay. Um, with this tether, I mean, typically we can expect to cut the hay, tet it the next day, and then bale it the following day. If it's not first crop, first crop is typically a little bit heavier, so it takes a little bit longer to dry. Um, we didn't fit that window for first crop this year, but having it here, we're able to just kind of broadcast the, te the hay out all over the field, and that way we're reducing the amount of moisture that's in the hay itself. So I went ahead and greased this up yesterday. She's all ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and spread the wings out. I was a uh, fool, and when I was trying to undo the wing locks, I dropped it out of the bat back of the tractor. So I'm gonna hook that right up there until I can climb up in. So when the locks are in place, all you really gotta do is pull on this rope. And that way it's unlocked, but you still gotta drop the wings down. She's all set. When we're tetting, we want to run the tractor at about 1500 RPMs. Uh, we don't want to run it too fast so that it just kind of pulverizes the hay. We just want to throw the hay out. So the slower we run it, the better. It's more gentle on the hay. Um, you can either set the tractor to run. We always have tried to run it around 1500 or lower. Um, but if you run it up to about 2100 RPM, since it's a 540 PTO, the PTO should be rotating at 540 revolutions per minute. It's time to fire it up and get started. We're running about 1200 for now. Once we get going, maybe I'll adjust it a little bit. You want to run the tether just along the ground so that it picks up the hay. Now it's kind of like threading a needle. You have to be pretty careful so that you're not just digging into the ground because that can be an issue if you're not careful. just a boy and it's gone we made quick work of this field we're gonna pack up and head down Travis cut the pasture grass down there um, it's not currently being used so we we're gonna cut it up for hay so gotta do that and then we're out of here yeah there shouldn't be a pond there there hasn't been in about a decade. Chocolate infused hay.
Oh boy. Okay, Ryan, don't Ted your yard. Don't Ted your yard. Don't Ted your yard. I'm gonna Ted my yard. <laughs> that was fun while it lasted. We just got out to my place. We're gonna spread out the tedder and start tedding out here.